Hello everybody, today we're going to take a closer look at the gaming performance of the brand new RTX 2050 for laptops, which weirdly received a model name of the older generation just about before Nvidia is going to release the RTX 4000 series, but well, um, what the f***? If you want to skip directly to the gaming benchmarks, feel free to use the timestamps provided by YouTube. Okay now, you'll have to know that the RTX 2050 is based on the same chip as the RTX 3050 but is being held back by a small 64-bit memory bus instead of 128-bit. By the way, it comes with 4GB GDDR6 at 7000MHz. The laptop I'm using for today's test isn't considered to be a gaming laptop. It's a Lenovo ThinkBook 16 G4 Plus which comes with the fastest possible 45W version of the RTX 2050, an i7-12700H, 16GB of LPDDR5 RAM with 4800 MHz, a very fast 1TB NVMe SSD and a 16-inch WQXGA display which for the sake of all my benchmarks was used at 1080p for a better comparability. I have to point out that the CPU seemed to power throttle quite a lot, at least according to the displayed CPU boost clock. But I'm not 100% sure about how that works with the P and E cores, and the FPS didn't seem to be affected that much, as the results actually were about what I expected. But I need to point that out for the sake of transparency. The laptop is also capable of dynamic boost, meaning it can give more wattage to the GPU if needed and reduce the power the CPU can use which is why sometimes the GPU wattage of the RTX 2050 is above the 45 watt I've mentioned in the beginning. I'm planning on doing a more detailed review of the laptop in a separate video soon, so make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're interested. The first title for today is Assassin's Creed Valhalla on medium settings and 1080p. The average FPS was around 55 FPS and the 1% low were around 37 FPS. The game is definitely enjoyable that way, but for a stable 60 FPS you would need to further lower the settings. Me personally, I would probably go with the medium preset. Fighting usually lowers the FPS a bit, but it was still kind of fluid and enjoyable in fights. The 4GB VRAM seemed to be okay according to my OSD. In Apex Legends I was using medium settings at 1080p and saw a decent average of 110 FPS and a 1% low of 63 FPS. So capping to 60 FPS would get you a buttery smooth experience and saving some energy as well, but of course most people would want more FPS despite the tearing you'll get on the 60Hz screen the laptop offers. Either way, the game is perfectly playable and looks okay, especially on a 16-inch screen. Next. In Battlefield 5, I did have severe issues in the first hour of benchmarking the laptop. The RTX 2050 achieved an average of 78 on medium settings and 1080p, but the 1% low wasn't really good with only 25 FPS. And as you can see, the frame times were really, really bad and the game was stuttering hard. I'm kinda used to this in Battlefield 5 as this happens on most PCs, so I tried to activate VSync, but that didn't really help. The average FPS was 60 FPS after activating it, but it was still stuttering really hard. So I was playing the same maps over and over and over again, and after more than 2 hours it finally started to get better. I'm always assuming that Battlefield 5 really does a bad job at loading the shaders that you need, even using a fast NVMe SSD didn't seem to help with that. So if you ever have problems with Battlefield 5 on a new machine, keep playing and keep playing and play some more, it most likely will get better. I was using low settings at 1080p with DLSS on quality mode in Cyberpunk 2077 and got an average of around 50 FPS with a 1% of 30 FPS. It's not super optimal for a first person game but it's playable. At least there weren't too many frame time spikes which is probably the i7's doing its magic. I'm kinda sure though that the small 64-bit memory bus has to pay its toll in this title. Nevertheless, I was eager to see if ray tracing would be usable with the RTX 2050 like at all, so I was using the new integrated benchmark to first test the game on low settings, disabled RTX and DLSS in performance mode, which got me an average of 67 FPS. 
Activating ray tracing and only using the RTX lighting on medium, lower the FPS to 42, which will still be playable, but I'm not sure if I would use it that way. Unfortunately, further activating reflections broke the 4GB VRAM in most scenes, resulting in an unplayable average of 20 FPS. So it's kinda possible to use RTX, but I wouldn't recommend it as it doesn't make that much sense un unless you want to play the game with 30 FPS. In CSGO I was using medium settings at 1080p in which the RTX 2050 and of course the fast i7 12700H were able to achieve an average of 201 FPS with a 1% low of 84 FPS. Gameplay was really smooth since you usually can't feel the rather low 1% FPS in CSGO. 200 FPS is equal to an input lag of only 3.3 milliseconds, which should be good enough for anybody. So I'd say let's have a look at the next title. Since everyone and their dog, including me, was playing Elden Ring this year, I was testing it in 1080p and medium settings as well. I achieved an average FPS of around 48 and a 1% low of 35 FPS. I wouldn't mind the tiering and prefer that to capping it at 30 FPS any day, as you definitely want as little input lag as possible for this game. But it's definitely enjoyable on the RTX 2050 and of course, if you're okay with those settings, you could probably hit some stable 60 FPS. To achieve at least 60 FPS in Far Cry 6, I was using the low preset at 1080p which enabled the RTX 2050 to achieve an average of 65 FPS and a 1% low of 43 FPS. The game still looks ok on low settings, but there is probably no headroom for tinkering around with the settings. And you probably might want to cap the FPS at 60 in this case, I guess, as that would make it a bit more stable. In Fortnite I was using the so-called Pro settings, which means epic view distance and everything else on low. This resulted in an average of 125 and a 1% low of 68. I was using DirectX 12 by the way, because DirectX 11 resulted in much much lower FPS for some reason. DLSS didn't help anything with these settings, because we're actually seeing some kind of CPU bottleneck in this case. So that would only make sense on higher graphics settings. Next. Forza Horizon 5 was perfectly playable on medium settings with an average of 90 FPS and a 1% low of 60 FPS. You could easily choose high settings if you're okay with 60 FPS. There were a few frame time drops and stutters which became less after some time in game. I'm assuming this is once more a problem of shader loading and is not the RTX 2050's fault, but more like a game engine issue or it's the power throttling of the CPU. I was using high settings at 1080p for GTA 5, resulting in 77 FPS on average and a 1% low of 52 FPS. The game has been released 7 years ago now and doesn't trouble the RTX 2050, just like expected. The same should apply to GTA Online if you're into that. The 16GB RAM and the fast i7 of this laptop surely would you allow you to install some mods as well. For Horizon Zero Dawn I was using the medium preset at 1080p with DLSS on quality mode and the RTX 2050 was able to achieve an average of 55 FPS and a 1% low of 36. So either re slightly reducing the settings or using DLSS on balance should be able to provide an average of 60 FPS. As you might have spotted, the frame time graph isn't completely flat but the gameplay felt fluid and it's absolutely enjoyable this way. Kingdom Come Deliverance was working very well on the RTX 2050. Using medium settings at 1080p, I saw a high average of 70 and a 1% low of 55. The game was running just perfectly stable and fluid and it still looks fantastic in my opinion due to the great realistic level and world design. Next. I was even benchmarking Microsoft Flight Simulator on medium settings at 1080p in which the RTX 2050 was achieving between 35 and 50 FPS on average, which depends a lot on the area you are flying in currently. Thanks to the 16GB RAM and the fast i7, frame times and gameplay seem to be pretty stable as well. 30 FPS is absolutely ok for this game in my opinion as you almost never have fast movement or hectic gameplay. 
I had a big lag once while testing, but I couldn't repeat that. So I'm guessing it should work just fine. Enjoy! For Minecraft, I was actually testing the RTX feature once more and activated ray tracing with 12 chunks visibility combined with the highest settings. And as you can see here, it is actually working with around 42 FPS on average, and it surely does look cozy and neat. Minecraft might be one of the very few games where some people could actually want to use the ray tracing feature of the RTX 2050 for once. Of course, deactivating RTX would allow you to play with 60 FPS on average or even more if you disable VSync via the options file, which unfortunately can't be done directly in-game. In PUBG, I was once more using medium settings and saw an average of 74 FPS and a 1% low of 35 FPS. Of course, low or very low settings could get you near 100 FPS if you would prefer that, but either way, the game is perfectly playable. There have been a few frame time spikes and lags, but they would once more go away after playing for a little longer. Now in Red Dead Redemption 2, I was using medium settings with high textures and DLSS in quality mode using the Vulkan engine and saw decent 59 FPS on average and a good 1% low of 49 FPS. It's safe to say that the game looks and feels nice this way. You could surely optimize it but bit by tinkering around with the settings, which I couldn't be bothered with anymore as the Red Dead Redemption 2 graphic options menu just makes me go nuts for several reasons. But that's another story. Oh, by the way, that's me adjusting the graphic settings. That's that right here. This is the moment I'm adjusting the graphic settings. I just wanted once to try ultra settings, so in The Witcher 3 I did and the RTX 2050 was able to achieve an average of around 58 FPS and a 1% low of 28 and frequent frame time drops and micro stuttering unfortunately, which was getting a bit better after playing it for a while, but unfortunately the laptop seemed to have a little problem with this game. Maybe the dynamic boost is pulling too much watt from the CPU to support a GPU because these stutters somehow felt like they were CPU related, as I have played the game on dozens of PCs and usually weaker CPUs were causing stutters. I'm not 100% sure though. Valorant was running perfectly fine with an average of 246 FPS and a 1% low of 103 on high settings. And I used to have a lot of problems on other laptops where the GPU wasn't fully utilized and the FPS was hovering around the mid 100s, which would still be good, but it's just such a light game and should run on toasters and calculators. However, on this laptop and this GPU, it was running perfectly fine. And in today's last game, Warzone, I was feeding the RTX 2050 with medium settings and DLSS in quality mode resulting in an average of 68 FPS and a 1% low of 35, which could be stabilized after a few matches. PS, activating DLSS in performance or balanced mode didn't provide additional FPS since the laptop is running once more into a kind of CPU power limit, unfortunately. Now it's safe to say that the RTX 2050 itself is absolutely capable of basic budget or even more than basic gaming. It's a tiny bit faster than the 35 watt version of the RTX 3050 in most cases. If you're okay with 30 FPS, you could even use ultra settings in many games, at least if the 4GB VRAM won't become a problem. Especially eSport titles are working really well. But you have to keep in mind that the RTX 2050 will probably mostly come in laptops that only have 60Hz monitors. If gaming is your main concern and you can get a laptop with an RTX 3050, RTX 2060 GTX 1660 Ti for the same price or less, I would prefer these GPUs instead though. We'll see if the RTX 2050 will sell at all or if, or if it will fail from the start. Now that's all for today, if you like the content, think about subscribing to the channel for more stuff like this and hit that like button as well. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss.